In this demo, I'm going to show you how to create a project using the Yeoman Generator for Microsoft Teams and configure the custom Microsoft Teams app with single sign-on to submit requests to Microsoft Graph. Developing Microsoft Teams apps requires a Microsoft 365 tenant, Microsoft Teams configured for development, and the necessary tools installed in your workstation. For the Microsoft 365 tenant, follow the instructions in the Microsoft Teams documentation on how to prepare your Microsoft 365 tenant for obtaining a developer tenant if you don't already have a Microsoft 365 account. Make sure that you have also enabled Microsoft Teams for your organization. Microsoft Teams must be configured to enable custom apps and allow custom apps to be uploaded to your tenant in order to build custom apps for Microsoft Teams. Again, follow the instructions on the same Prepare Your Microsoft 365 Tenant page that I previously mentioned. You'll use Node.js to create a custom Microsoft Teams app in this module and in this demo. The exercises and demos in this module assume that you have the following tools installed on your developer workstation. Node.js version 12 or higher, NPM version 6 or higher, Gulp version 4 or higher, Yeoman version 3 or higher, the Yeoman Generator for Microsoft Teams version 3 or higher, and the latest version of Visual Studio Code. You must have the minimum versions of these prerequisites installed on your workstation in order to complete this demo. Before creating our app, the first thing we need to do is to create and register an Azure AD application, which we'll use to connect to Microsoft Teams. I'm gonna do that by starting with Edge. And then I'm gonna to go to the Azure Active Directory Admin Center at aad.portal.azure.com. I'm already signed in with my user, so you can see here that I'm signed in as Megan Browery, as my temp user. So I'm gonna to go to the Azure Active Directory um, app registration section, and I'm gonna go create a new registration. The name of my app is gonna be my Teams SSO app. It's going to be configured for multi-tenant. And then I need to set the redirect URI. Now, I'm gonna set this for a moment to replace.ingrok.io slash off n. Now, why am I doing that? Microsoft Teams requires that our applications all are served up from an HTTPS endpoint that's fully routable. When we're doing development, we're working off of our normal local workstations. Uh, and usually when we're running a local web server, we're on localhost, and it's also not HTTPS, it's HTTP. Ingrok is a free utility that you can use to, that will, when you spin it up, it will expose your local web server as an HTTPS endpoint with a fully routable URL that's going to be some subdomain, as I have replace here, then ingrok.io. Every time you spin up ingrok, or every time you restart ingrok, it creates a new subdomain, uh, a new random subdomain that is that you can use. But during development, if you're using the free version of ingrok, that subdomain is always gonna change every time that you restart ingrok, which means we have to come back in and replace this subdomain every time we restart it. The commercial version of ngrok, which I have a license for, uh, does allow you to reserve a subdomain uh, for your account. Now, I've already got that set up on my machine. It just simplifies some of the uh, demo process here, uh, but it is not required. I'm just saving the, pro the steps of having to go back and reset the subdomain every time I spin this back up, which is totally possible that you can do. I'm just trying to save myself a little bit of time. So I'm gonna use my subdomain that I've reserved called andrewconnell.ingrok.io. Now the next thing we're gonna, I'm gonna do is come over here to the redirect URIs, and I wanna enable the two uh, options for implicit grants. I need to enable the access tokens and ID tokens, and then I'll save my changes. Now the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and create a client secret. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new client secret, accept all the defaults, and let it create our secret. I'm gonna save this inside of VS Code or just as a text file that I can access later. I also need to grab the ID of our application. So I'm gonna grab that ID as well from the overview page uh, on our app and save that. We're gonna use that in just a minute. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to expose some permissions or set some permissions for my app. It currently has user.read, but I need to add a few more in order to participate in the single sign-on process. These OpenID permissions of email, OpenID, and profile are all required for single sign-in uh, with Microsoft Teams to work. Offline access is also required by some uh, parts of a single sign-on, depending on the library that you're using. 
I'm going to go ahead and select it for now and then I'll just add those permissions. Now anything else that my app was going to do, I need to add those permissions as well. Uh, and I should in production have my users uh, go through a consent prompt to make sure that they grant the application these uh, permissions. However, just in the interest of this demo, as an administrator, I'm going to go ahead and consent to all permissions that are going to be requested on behalf of all the users in my organization. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and expose an API. Now, I need to do this in order to create a new scope or a new permission that Microsoft Teams is going to need. So I'm going to come over here to uh, the application ID URI. I'm going to select set. And you notice here it has my GUID for my application already listed. I need to add something else. I need to add the subdomain for my application that is going to be hosted. So as I talked about earlier, if, you, if you're using the free version of Ngrok, when you spin Ngrok back up, you're going to need to come back in and update the application ID URI in order to make sure that uh, it's always using the correct, vert, the correct uh, address there. Now the next thing I need to do is to define a scope for our application. So a scope is like a permission. Uh, that is that we can grant or that people can grant consent to. I'm going to create a new permission here and this new permission is going to call, be called access as user. This is something that Teams is going to request whenever it um, goes to uh, grab an access token or grab a, an ID token for our user. So I'm going to say that it's a the permission scope is called access as a user. Administrators and users can grant this permission. And then if the permission was going to be, if it was going to prompt someone for the permission, I need to list out a description of what they would see. So if an administrator is going to grant this permission, it's going to be described as teams can access the user's profile. The description is teams can call the apps web APIs as the current user. And then for the user, if they were getting this permission, it'll say Teams can access the user profile and make requests on the user's behalf. And then for the description, it'll say Teams can call this API, this app's APIs with the same rights as the user. And I'm going to set the state of this permission to enable, which means it's actually going to it'll be available for use. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to specify two client applications that are going to automatically be trusted uh, by our Azure AD app. These two apps, you're going to list them by a GUID, and these are the Microsoft Teams clients. So the first one is all of the Microsoft mobile and, and desktop clients. So I'll go ahead and add that. And then the second one, the second GUID I'm going to list here are the, is the uh, Microsoft Web Client. These GUIDs are all listed in the Microsoft Teams um, SSO documentation, so refer to the documentation uh, for more details.